This is an overview of the Alcatel-Lucent 8018 telephone. In this video, we'll go over the station hardware and also touch on a few features. The three keys on either side of the soft display are feature keys, so whatever line is next to that key, or whatever feature is next to that key, is what will be activated. What we're looking at here may or may not be the way your phone is programmed when you received it, but this screen can be customized with whatever feature keys you'd like to see. Here on this screen we have a blank key, followed by two line keys, and on this side we have the station forwarding key, and a pair of blank feature keys. We'll get into using those later in the video. Now as we work our way down, we have the traditional dial pad with the alphanumeric keys, and below that we have two dedicated feature keys, which are the off hook and the on hook button. Moving further down here, we have the mute key. If you're speaking on the handset or the speakerphone, this key will mute the station so the person on the other end can't hear you. Next we have the minus and plus keys that control the volume level as well as adjusting the contrast of the LCD display. Then we have our speakerphone key. If you press that, you activate the speakerphone. You can hear the dial tone and the blue light above that key is illuminated, showing the speakerphone is active. The phone itself supports a wideband audio format. So it's a very rich speakerphone that's easy to listen to. The button at the bottom right is the mailbox access key. When I press that, it gives me a display of my calls, voice messages, and instant messages. If I had any voice messages here, I could select voice message. Enter my password, and it would play the voice message for me. Now, of course, the C key I just used is the cancel key, which takes you back one level in the menu structure. So if, like we did here last time, we press the messaging key, we can now press the C key, and we're taken back to the previous menu. Next to the C key is the navigation array. This allows me to navigate within the screen. So you'll notice I have multiple tabs across the top I can access by moving left and right. And of course I can also use the array to scroll vertically. You'll notice there's a dot in the middle of the screen that shows how far down the screen I've navigated so I don't get lost in the pages. If I keep scrolling down to the bottom here, you'll see keys that have an ellipsis next to them. That means the key hasn't been programmed yet. You have a total of 36 programmable keys available here, so you can program a large number of speed dials and other one-touch features. Below the navigation array are seven additional feature keys. The first three will come pre-programmed, with the remaining four keys free to assign as your administrators wish. The first key is an alphanumeric toggle key, which is helpful for searching the directory by name or for naming keys. When I press that key, the lamp is illuminated, and you can see if I begin selecting letters here, the dial by name directory is brought forward. Press OK, and eight listings are found for Ed in the system directory. The next button is the hold key, which allows you to take an active call and place it on hold while you go and get additional information or make another call. After that we have the transfer key, which allows you to take a call you are on and transfer it to another extension, another group, or another number off premises. To make a call, I can either make internal calls, which will typically be three or four digit extension numbers, or I can make external calls, which usually means I have to dial a nine to tell the system I'm dialing outside the office. If I want to make an internal call, I can dial the extension and away I go. For example, 1148. You can see the Teddy demo station is alerted and I'll answer that station off camera. And you can see on the display the caller is in conversation. So now I'll disconnect that call with the on hook button. Now to dial an outside line, I need to start by dialing 9, followed by the number I'd like to reach. I'm going to dial the icon main number, starting with 9. Thank you for calling Icon Voice Networks. We can also be reached at iconvoicenetwork.com. And the call is completed. To place a call on hold, I'll first ring the extension here so we have a call to work with.
use the call pickup key to answer. And now from here, we can select the hold key to place the call on hold. As we can see, there's a change in the phone icon here showing that the call is on hold. To pick the call back up, we select the music note and the call is back in conversation. Now if I'd like to put this on hold and place a second call, I'll select hold. And from here, I just dial the number I'd like to call. I'll answer that call off camera. And as you can see, we now show the active call here, and the music note on the right hand side of the screen shows we have a second call on hold. We can use the navigation array to tab over and see the call details. We see the Teddy demo station is on hold. If we want to toggle back over to that, we select answer, and now we're on an active conversation with the Teddy demo station. The same if we'd like to swap back over to this call. Select Answer, and the screen shows us we're back on an active call with this number. If we want to transfer this call, we have two options. We can make a blind transfer, which transfers the call directly. There's no interaction with the person you're transferring the call to. Or a supervised transfer, which allows you to speak to the person you're transferring the call to before it goes through. This allows you to give them some details on who is calling or what they're calling about. So we'll start by calling the station here. Answer with the off hook key. So if we want to transfer this as a supervised transfer, for instance, we hit the transfer key and dial the extension we want to transfer it to. I want to transfer it to Tess and I know her number is 2330. Hey Tess, it's Teddy. I just wanted to transfer this call through to you. Uh, yeah, sure. Send it through. And we press the transfer key a second time, and the transfer is completed. Tess has the call. If we want to do a blind transfer and don't want to speak with Tess or the second party before we send the call through, we would simply press the transfer key immediately after dialing the number. So for instance, I'll call the station and answer the call. And I'll answer here. For a blind transfer, we hit transfer, the extension, and transfer again. The call has been transferred straight away. To demonstrate conferencing two calls, I'm first going to make a call to the Teddy demo station. Answer that off camera. Okay, and you can see we're now in an active call with the Teddy demo station here. So if we want to conference a second number, I select the conference key. And from here I dial the number I want to conference. I'll answer that second call off camera. And you can now see I'm in an active call with the second number I dialed. So if I want to conference those two numbers, I select conference again. And I'm now in an active conference with both of those callers. You can see the graphic indication at the top of the screen showing both calls are active. Hang up the second caller. You can see now I'm just in an active conversation with the Teddy demo station. I'll hang up that station as well. And that call is released. To forward a station, first you select the forwarding key, which is this key in the top right-hand corner of the display. Right now it's inactive. If I select that, we're taken to this forwarding screen. Now if I want to immediately forward incoming callers to another number, I select this IMMED key. And here I enter the number I'd like to forward the calls. Hit OK, and forwarding has been accepted. So now if I dial this phone from the Teddy demo extension, 
it's going to forward the number that I programmed in there off camera to a secondary phone. So I'll dial that now. And that phone off camera is ringing. You can tell the phone is in a forwarding mode because the icon in the corner has changed and is animated. And we also get a notification scrolling across the top of the phone. To take the phone out of forwarding, we select the forwarding key, scroll down to cancel, select cancel. Here we get a text confirmation on the screen and the forwarding icon is back to its inactive state. The first time you set up your mailbox key, you'll be prompted by the phone for your system password. This is the password you'll get from your installing distributor. So first, we'll press the mailbox key. You are connected to your voice mailbox. You will be asked to enter your personal settings. Please enter your password. Please enter your new password. Now I'll enter the new password we'd like to use. Your password is 147888. Confirm. Press pound. To cancel, press star. Please record your name now. Please speak after the tone and press the pound sign when you have finished. Teddy. To replay your recording, press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. In addition, we can also use the prompts on the display to listen. Teddy. To replay your recording, press 1. To re-record, press star. To confirm, press pound. Recording accepted. And now we can see the mailbox light is no longer flashing, and now that it has been initialized, we can see the mailbox is currently empty. Let's take a look at managing messages. You can see on the voicemail key the blue light is flashing. That's because I've left a test voicemail on this station that we're going to go ahead and retrieve. So when we hit our voice messaging key, we're presented with a screen that shows us our call history, our voice messages, a list of the IMs, or instant messages sent to this station, and an option to send an IM as well. If we want to see our call history, we select Calls, and from here we have to enter the password for this station. After entering the password, we're taken to a call history screen. You can see at the top we have tabs for missed calls and all calls. We can use the navigation array to scroll over between those two, missed and all. We can also use the navigation array to scroll up and down. Here you can see all the calls that have been missed at this station. And if we go to all calls, we can see all calls that are both incoming and outgoing at this station. In this all call history, you can see that a bold number was a missed call. You can also tell from the icon we have incoming calls with an arrow pointing down. The X indicates the call was not completed and the circle indicates that it was. We can also see an up arrow on some of these calls that indicates an outgoing call. If we want to, we can also dial a number from the call history. Scroll here, select one of these entries. By selecting that, we get some more details, the time of the call, when it took place. And from here, we can select call. And that call is completed. Now if I'd like to go into my voicemail, select the messaging key, and I see I have one voicemail message. I select that. You can see that came in at 2.04 p.m. and who that came from. If I select OK, I can then press play. This is a test voicemail message. That'll play the message for us. We can also erase, and that message has been erased. You can see there are no new messages in this mailbox. It's now empty. Press the C key to get back to the main menu. To change the ringtone or the ringing volume level, we use a navigation array to scroll over to the menu tab. And from here we select settings, set, ringing. And from here we can change the ringtone for external calls, internal calls, and change the volume level. So if we want to set for external melodies, we select that, we can scroll through to hear all the different available ringtones. Select OK, and that ringtone has been accepted. 
press C, takes it back to the main menu. Now changing the ringing volume is in the same location as the ringtone, so we use the navigation array to scroll over to menu, select settings, set, ringing, and here we'll select level. We use the plus and minus keys to adjust the volume, all the way up, all the way back down, and select OK. Screen shows us that that ringing volume has been accepted. We press the C key to exit out to the main menu.